I'm going to be building some kitchen cupboards for my 112 scale miniature dollhouse. And I'm going to be explaining what 112 scale is and giving you some tips for building your models so that they're in the correct proportion to what the real life item would be. Whether you're building a 112 scale dollhouse or 1/6 scale Barbie furniture or even a box car for your HO model train, I'll show you how to simplify your calculations so that your projects are in the correct proportion and look perfect in your diorama. And stick around to the end because I'm going to give you a real down and dirty way to figure all this out without even having to understand the math behind the scales. So let's get started. I want to make sure that the cupboards that I'm going to be building for the kitchen pantry are in proportion to what the real cupboards would have been. Back in the 1910s to 1920s, when this house would have been built, kitchen cupboards weren't common in kitchens. Here you can see the floor plan of the house. You'll notice that there's no kitchen cab that's shown in the kitchen. There's a small cab that which appears to have a sink in it. This house didn't have a bathroom and it's probably unlikely that it would have even had running water inside. It probably would have had a pump and a well outside. Here's a picture of a Hoosier cabinet which was commonly used in kitchens back in those days. A Hoosier cabinet was a kitchen workstation which could store the tools you needed for your baking such as pots and pans and it would have had a place to store your flour, spices, sugar, all your baking needs. It often would have a hopper which would hold a large sack of flour and a glass container which would hold a large amount of sugar. But I'll be talking about this in a future video when I start building the cabinet. I did a video about kitchen pantries. I'll pop a link at the end of this video and you just need to click on it if you want to check it out and learn more about these kitchens and these old houses. Today I want to figure out how big I need to make the model of the cabinet so I can start designing it. I need to calculate some simple measurements like the width, height and depth of the cabinet. I'm using a 112 scale but you can apply this method to any scale you're using for your miniatures. I saw this cabinet in an antique store. The length of the cabinet is about 4 feet and the height of the counter is about 30 inches high. I I looked at my own kitchen counters in my modern day kitchen and I noticed the cabinets were 36 inches high. Hey, if you're enjoying my video, please hit the like button. As a new YouTuber, it really helps me out and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. That'd be awesome. 112 scale means that every inch in your model is equal to one foot. So it's easy to see that in a 112 scale, one inch in the model is equal to 12 inches in real life. Or in other words, one inch equals one foot. We could then say if one inch equals one foot, then two inches must equal two feet or 24 inches. And of course we could continue on where three feet equals 36 inches or three feet and four feet equals 48 inches or four feet and so on. The length of my Hoosier cabinet is four feet or 48 inches. So it's easy to see that the length of the cabinet is going to be four inches long. Looking at my kitchen cabinets, we can see that they're 36 inches high or three feet high. So the height of the work surface on my cabinets, if I was going to follow this particular design would be a height of three inches. We could also calculate this. We know that there's 12 inches to a foot, so 3 times 12 is 36 inches. In other words, the counter is 36 inches high. If we take 36 inches and divide it by 12 because there's 12 inches in every foot, we see that we get an answer of 3. So if I was to build my kitchen cabinets 3 feet high in real life, that would be equivalent to 3 inches high in my miniature model. Let's figure out how high we need to make the work surface of the Hoosier cabinet that in real life is 30 inches high. We see that 30 inches divided by 12 gives us 2.5. We know that 0.5 is equal to 1 half. So in other words, we would have to make the height of our cabinet 2.5 inches high in our model to be equivalent to 2.5 feet. Well, that was easy if we have a simple fraction like 0.5. But suppose we had a number that wasn't so easy to visualize, like some oddball number decimal like say 0.3768. How would we know how big to make our model? You can see that the decimal for 0.5 is equal to 1 half. You can easily prove this by entering it into your calculator 1 divided by 2. 
Let's take a more complicated example for, let's say, an HO scale model train. Say you're building a diorama for your model train using the HO scale. The scale is 1 87th of an inch. We write it as a ratio as 1 colon 87. A common size for a train box car is about 40 feet long. If we calculate 40 feet into inches, that would be 12 times 40 or 480 inches. We take 480 and divide it by 87. This gives us an answer of 5.517 or approximately 5.5 inches, which is equal to 5.5 inches long. So your model box car that's 40 feet long would need to be 5.5 inches long in your diorama. Now let's try another example that's not so simple. Let's say that your train box car is 50 feet long in real life. Again, take 50 feet, multiply it by 12 inches, and that gives you the length of the real life box car being 600 inches. We divide that by 87 and this gives us an answer of 6.8966 or approximately, in other words, 6.89 inches. 0.89 isn't an easy fraction to figure out using your ruler. Let's use a decimal fraction conversion chart and when we look at 0.89 to see what that is as a fraction on our ruler, we see that it's equal to about 57 64 Well, that's not a very easy fraction to deal with either. Choose the most common fraction in the range, which would be say 7 eighths of an inch, which is equivalent to being 0.875 of an inch. So if you're going to build a 50 foot train car or box car, you should build it approximately 6 and 7 eighths of an inch long to keep it in proportion. There are many different scales used for miniatures such as 1 64th, which is used for Hot Wheel dioramas, or 1 6 which is used for your Barbie dollhouse furniture. Sometimes scales don't always work out to be perfect. For for example, if you take a Barbie doll and convert the sizes to real life, Barbie would have been about 5 foot 9 and her bust would have been 39 inches and her waist would only be 18 inches. And her feet, well, they'd be so tiny she'd only wear like about a size 3 shoe and she'd be approximately 110 pounds. In reality, she wouldn't even be able to walk because she couldn't support her body on these tiny feet. And Ken, well, converting his height, he'd be approximately 6 feet tall. His waist would be about 25 inches where an average waist for a man this size would be about 32 inches. He would probably wear a size 8 shoes when proportioned, but in reality, he'd probably be wearing a size 10. There's been a lot of controversy about how unrealistic these dimensions are, and some say that it could even lower a child's self-esteem by not being able to achieve this body type, but that's a video for another day. When building my model house, I had to resize the 2x4s. Here I am measuring one of the 2x4s using a caliper. The thickness in real life would be about 2 inches. The thickness of my 2x4s are 0.4845 inches. Doing the calculation, I enter the number and multiply it by 12. This gives me 5.814 inches. So in real life, the thickness of my 2x4s would be almost 6 inches thick. I'll check the width of the 2x4. When I multiply this by 12, I get an answer of 9.18. That's about 9 and 3 sixteenths of an inch wide. So in real life, my miniature 2x4s would actually be almost 6 inches thick and 9 inches wide. Using my formula, if I wanted to make the 2x4s to the exact 112 scale, we'd say 4 inches wide divided by 12 gives us about 0.33. And when we look at the decimal conversion chart, we see that 0.33 is approximately 21 64 or about 5 16 of an inch wide, not even 3 8 of an inch wide, smaller than that even. And the thickness would be 2 inches divided by 12, which gives us 0.1666. So the thickness of these 2x4s looking at our chart would be about 5 30 seconds of an inch or slightly more than an eighth of an inch. These wouldn't be very strong to hold the walls, roof, and other components of the dollhouse. When building miniatures, we have to make compensations because the smallest nail I could find or the smallest screw I could find would probably split and break the wood. One mistake I did when building this house though is that I didn't allow for the extra width of the beams. As a result, the size of my rooms are slightly smaller than they should have been due to the thicker walls. Whether you're building furniture for a dollhouse, dishes, lamps, stoves, whatever, we can have a better idea of how to proportion our miniature furniture and accessories for our dollhouses. And if you're building a diorama for a model train, we need to know how big to make the buildings and houses. We need 
need to be able to calculate this as well. So here's your down and dirty trick on how to calculate the size of your miniatures based on the real size of the item. And you don't need any math either. It doesn't matter what skill you use. For my example, I'm going to use a 112 scale and calculate how big a queen size bed should be for a dollhouse. We know the standard size of a queen size bed is about 60 inches wide by 80 inches long. Let's have a look at this calculator. It's free online and I'll put a link in the description for you. We know that our scale is 112, so enter that in, and the width of our queen size bed is 60 inches. Using the calculator, make sure the scale factor is set to 1 colon 12 or whatever scale you're using. Enter the measurements of the real size object that you have. Make sure to use the correct units, feet, inches, or whatever you're using. If you enter the size in feet, make sure you change the units to feet. If you're using inches, make sure you change it to inches. Press the calculate button and then when you scroll down, you'll see the actual size for your miniature. Make sure the answer is in the units that you want to use, inches probably. In this case, the bed is 60 inches wide, so our scale model of the bed would need to be 5 inches wide. When you enter the length of the bed being 80 inches, you'll see that the length of the bed needs to be 6.66 inches. Using the decimal fraction converter, look for the decimal approximately equal to 0.667. We see here that there is a 0.671 8, which is 43 64 That's a difficult fraction to work with. So you could make your bed a tiny bit longer or three quarters of an inch. So the length of your queen size bed for a 112 scale dollhouse should be six and three quarter inches long and the width needs to be five inches. Well, now that I have all that straightened away, I can go ahead and start designing the kitchen cabinet or who's your cabinet for my kitchen pantry in my 112 scale miniature model dollhouse. Hey, why don't you check out this video, the one I told you about earlier, the one about kitchen pantries. We'll see you in the next video.